Hi and uh, welcome to an overview of the latest release of my workflow collection. First thing to note is that uh, with this release my previous boxing weight themed workflows so that's the cruiserweight, lightweight, heavyweight etc they're archived in an included zip file um, and I'm instead focusing on a simplified in inverted commas uh, version that can be used with both SDXL and Stable Diffusion 1.5 or 2.0 models. A uh, couple of things to note. There is one custom node of my own in there for aspect ratios. This is also included in the zip file from Civit AI. Right, let's go and take a look at it. So when you first load it up, this is the view you're going to get very similar to the previous versions and again I'm, I'm working with the same sort of ethos in mind i.e. a daily work screen where most of your stuff can be done if you just want to generate images and if you zoom out there's a wider view with some additional elements around the side so I'll start off by taking a look at the uh, standard view. One thing to note, FreeU and ChatGPT Assistant are disabled by default. Uh, the ChatGPT Assistant you do need an OpenAI account for, and I'll leave you to research that. There are various notes scattered throughout regarding that. So coming down from the left hand corner the first button up here is if you've got chat gpt assistant enabled this is this allows you to turn it on or off set it to zero for off or one for on and if you are using the chat gpt assistant then the response from the assistant will be displayed in this text debug box down here coming on down uh, we've got the positive and negative inputs now with this version I have dropped the uh, SDXL method of having a supplementary box as well and this was so that I could make it backwards compatible with 1.5 and 2 underneath this we have two prompt stylers they say SDXL but they work equally well with 1.5 and then below that We've got two LoRa loaders for those of you that like to use LoRas. Coming down the next column, uh, we start off with the two checkpoint loaders that are used in the two different samplers. I have retained the SDXL method of uh, dual samplers, commonly referred to as base and refiner. Uh, I, however, prefer to think of it just as sampler one and sampler two. You can use the same model for both. You can use different models. You could use an SDXL model and an XDXL refiner model in the second. Entirely up to you. Down below the checkpoint loaders, we've got the VAE loader. If you don't want to use the baked in VAEs. And below that, we've got the VAE selector. So to use the baked in VAE, Set it to 1. If you want to use a standalone VAE, set it to 2. Down below this we have an aspect ratio selector for the image size. This is a custom node and it's included in the zip file. Just extract it and save the Winston folder inside uh, Comfy UI custom nodes. We then have the total number of steps. And the number of those steps that will be done on the sampler one or using model one. Uh, I've left it at, I'd like to use about 80%. That seems to work nicely for me. Again, you can play with this and use whatever figures you like. Below that is the CFG. And then the global seed in spot from the Inspire pack. Uh, what this does is this synchronizes all the seeds in any samplers to be the same value so rather than changing it in the sampler 
you set it down here whether you want to randomize it fix it increment decrement etc across the top here uh, these are the only collapse nodes because there's nothing really to adjust in them uh, these are various the AD decoders encoders upscalers etc I'll come on to the upscaling in a minute we have sampler one which is uh, traditionally referred to as the base model and again next to that sampler two and within here you can set your sampler name schedule names etc uh, coming over this is a preview image of the output of sampler two and if you're not doing upscaling this will also be the same image that's saved over here in the save image final in terms of upscaling if you want to turn upscaling on leave this set to one if you want to turn it off for any reason set it to two the sampler for the upscaling again same thing you can set the sampler names to be the same as the main two samplers or set it to something different I typically leave the denoise at 0.25. Uh, one thing to note over here is I do use a two upscale model method. I like to use a one times upscaler as the first pass uh, just to clean the image up a bit and then I use a four times upscaler for the second one. Down in the notes box there are links to the files that I use. Again feel free to choose your own. <laughs> the next box here links back into the downscale box at the top and that's to set the overall upscale factor. If that wasn't here you'd end up with always with a four times image. Uh, I'm only running a 1080 Ti and it does struggle a bit once I start going above two times on uh, SDXL models or four times on Stable Diffusion 1.5 models. And then if I go into the zoomed out view, so there's the view we were just looking at, the green section, over to the left we've got a whole series of stylers from the mile high pack uh, there is a link down below here on where to get that if you don't have it uh, underneath there's the face detailer which is disabled by default if you want to enable it to use it right click on the group and set the group nodes to always and again, if you look at uh, LTT Data's uh, GitHub page, there's more instructions on how to use this over there. The next block is the engine room, which in previous versions had a lot of collapsed nodes in, which didn't make it very easy to follow. Uh, these are nodes which don't really need touching the background nodes, if you like. Coming over here, we've got IP adapters, and again, same as face detailer, if you want to use them, right click on it, and set nodes to always. Uh, as the subtitle says there, poor man's instant Laura, so you can load some images in, and IP adapters will do its magic and uh, pick up the styles and everything else, and again, as with everything, there are notes. Uh, in this case, a link to the maintainer's uh, YouTube channel with a good instructional video. And then finally, the final module is a control net module. And once again, if you want to enable it, set it there and choose your various options. As I say, this is a very, well, this is a relatively basic uh, workflow uh, and I think the main advantage is it's relatively logically laid out. Hope you enjoy using it.